Hello, I'm John. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you a brief tutorial on how to make the pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. I'm going to kind of go through everything, how my setup is and how I go ahead and perform things and how I put together my jack-o'-lanterns, kind of like you just saw. All right, so first things first, it doesn't start here, all right? It actually starts on a spire. If any of you are familiar with Aspire, Aspire is the program that helps design these so you can put on the CNC machine. If you come over to your CNC machine, I will show you how I have my jack o lantern set up. So I just got done cutting these, um, and a few things I want to point out is these uh, jack o lanterns are a little bit under five and a half inches wide. You can do five and a half inches wide, it works just fine. Just that these ones are the ones that I did a little bit different this, this time around. So a um, few things to point out is there's an inch at the bottom and an inch at the top. So you could put brad nails at the bottom to secure your um, jack-o'-lanterns to, or your pickets to your waste board. They come out just fine. And it's just my preferred method, uh, my preferred method rather than using double-sided tape. Because after a while, that gets kind of expensive and... Um, with the double sided tape, it could actually tear out and still do the same thing if there was nothing there, okay? Um, I have these spacers here uh, to help me continuously produce the jack-o'-lanterns and keep cutting the jack-o'-lanterns. The bits that I use for the jack-o'-lanterns are right here. So um, I use Jenny's bits, but when I'm usually cutting a um, cedar, I use the speed bits. Uh, this one is a one eighth inch bit long neck. This is what it looks like. That's what I use to cut out the faces. All right, and for the scarring, and I'll explain that in a little bit, I actually use a one fourth inch bit. Um, these bits are fairly cheap um, in comparison to the Jenny bits, which I love, but I use those for my more detailed projects. Um, so if you look right here on the waste board right here, um, this is where the scarring happens. That kind of gives me a, a general area that I know I'm going to be cutting after the pumpkins are all done um, or after jack o are all done. As you can see, the scarring actually goes in between each one of these. You could certainly do this without the scarring, but you're gonna have different size uh, pumpkins and that's the last thing you want. It's gonna make more work for yourself later on. The space in between here, I put these spacer blocks in here, just like I said, to give you the space needed. Right now it's at uh, three quarters of an inch. I prefer a half inch, but these ones are a little bit different pickets and different designs that I'm normally used to. I do use uh, tabs for my jack-o'-lanterns. Um, it makes it a lot easier and prevents anything from shooting out and kind of getting uh, a little bit. Um, the cool thing about the tabs is if you do it just right, the tabs actually come out really easily um, from the jack-o'-lanterns. Um, and as you can see, you know, I have my tabs set to customize. And here's one of them right here. I have it set to a tenth by a tenth. So uh, it, it does it on the last pass. I have my passes set to five. So it's a very thin tab and it usually hangs on pretty good. It does a really good job. How I remove my pumpkins from my waste board is that I usually just use a chisel and I kind of just pop it underneath here between the waste board and the picket. I give it a, a gentle hit, right? And then I kind of weed it back and forth. And then I lift up. And then when I get up to here, I kind of just wiggle it back and forth and they come off pretty easily. Usually the um, brad nails will come off with it. I use one inch of brad nails for this. Makes it really easy for them to be able to be pulled out. I wouldn't really recommend anything bigger unless you are using um, thicker pickets. These pickets that I'm using actually, I milled down to a half inch. So they, they come out pretty nice when you do a half inch. So that's kind of my thing here. What I do and how I get the brad nails out is I usually just use a, um, a needle nose of some sort, like such, and I'll put it right on the edge of something and I'll kind of put it to the maximum portion of the brad nail and I'll squeeze tight and I'll lift up. And that's how you get the whole entire brad nail out of it. 
the next part, it's gonna get kind of loud, but we're actually gonna talk about how we cut these, right? So you kind of see what I'm talking about with the cutting. After you get the waste pieces out of your pump or jack-o'-lantern faces, you come over your miter saw, or if you just cut them on your CNC machine, that's fine. But uh, um, one change that I'm going to be making is this, this scarring right here, which I have set for a quarter inch bit. I'm gonna try doing it with an eighth inch bit. It would probably be just fine with an eighth inch bit and it'll actually prevent me from having to keep changing bits throughout the process, which is gonna save me time actually. Um, the whole entire cutting process on the CNC machine for just the faces on my machine, how I have it set up takes about 32 minutes. The scarring takes about four minutes. So the reason why I'm gonna be changing the thickness of the bit, and I suggest you do too, to an eighth bit, inch bit, is because um, when you cut it, it's gonna be loud for a second here. The tops are just fine. You can get it, you can put your blade in to where it's, it's maxima, uh, at the maximum top part of the jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> and you can cut it out. The reason why I'm gonna adjust is because there's this little lip right here. If you can see that right there, um, that's about the the, uh, the thickness of the uh, eighth inch bit that I'm suggesting you all to use. So the, here's the reason why I suggest using an eighth inch bit. When you go through and you cut your jack lantern out of your waste board or of your uh, picket, it comes out fine. But then you gotta make a second cut on the other end to get that little lip off there. And that's just a waste of time. So now you got this nice flat spot, but it's just one less move you have to make when making your jack-o'-lanterns. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about assembly. So as you already saw, um, I was putting together some of my jack-o'-lanterns, and these are some of the basic faces that I use. I don't put bottoms on my jack-o'-lanterns because I know people want to stack them. This makes them pretty popular, makes them more likable to people, especially when storing them so they don't break the stems. The stems are just branches from my yard that I trimmed off throughout the year, and I use those as the jack-o'-lantern tops. It works pretty good, and it also gets the branches out of my yard too. It works great. Um, but uh, the assembly is, I take the face and I put the face in the front and I put the two sides on. I glue them and then I brad nail them. Usually two brad or three brad nails on each works just fine. And I do the same thing for the back. Glue it, a brad and a brad, and that's just it. For the top, I usually have it towards about a half an inch overhang on each side and just an eighth of an inch overhang on the top from the front to the back. The pumpkin uh, stem is drilled in through the bottom. And all it is is drilled from the center portion of it. You don't have to do center. It just, I think it looks good center. Some people like them toward they're not center. Want them a little bit off, you know, kind of like regular pumpkins and it works just fine. Okay. The biggest thing is, is pre-drilling holes. I've done this also with um, brad nails and glue and that works just fine. Just that a screw is something new I'm doing this year. It makes them a little more sturdier. So, cause people have a habit of grabbing them from the top or if they get bumped or something like that, you know, if you don't have enough glue on there or brad nails or if the wood is still wet or green, it has a chance of not really grabbing hold of the uh, cedar picket will not really adhere to the branch. So I'm um, trying screws this year and so far it seems to be pretty good. So assembly. So um, I usually have a little jig like I had last year, um, but uh, this year I haven't uh, made that jig yet. So we're gonna kind of talk about how I assemble the pumpkins, kind of like what I walked through with how those ones are made. Um, I'm gonna walk through the assembly of the jack-o'-lanterns. So you take your face and you take your three and then you take this right here, right? You take whatever kind of branch you want, you feel it looks good, right? The easiest way to think about this is you take your tape measure and just like I said, I'm at five and a quarter. I know five and a quarter, we're gonna go two and a half and then we're gonna go right in between two and a half. I'm gonna go right about right about uh, seven, uh, two and seven eighths. So I'm just gonna take a little screw. I'm gonna put a mark right there. Okay, then I'm gonna take, and this is gonna be from the inside. That's the reason why I'm not about, worried about a little dimple bean right there. So these are seven wide. Okay, so it doesn't look like I was too far off. So I already know where I'm at there. So boom, that's where it's gonna be. I will start off by pre-drilling the hole 
it just makes it easier for the stem to where just the tip sticks out. That gives me a good starting point for the branch to go in. So you can kind of take it and you can kind of screw it in a little bit and that helps a lot right there. Then you take it and you hold on to it, hold on to it pretty tight. You can use a vise too, that's probably a lot safer than this. And you just gently go in. You don't need to go full blast in. You just want to go until it's flush. And if it's not flush, you just keep going a little bit further. See how you still got that space right there? So you want to tighten it up just a little bit more. Again, don't uh, force it in. Just kind of keep an eye on it. And then you'll get it nice and flat. So that's going to be the top. And again, just like I said, it's a little more sturdier than using brad nails and glue like I was last year. And you get a little uniqueness when you leave the little stubs on. It works pretty good. So for the rest of the assembly, so that's that's basically the hard part right there. So again, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. I prefer them not to be centered because it gives them that uniqueness. So now we're going to go on to the walls. So your jack lantern face, obviously take a look at it. Make sure you get the side that you want on here. Okay. So I want this side right here. I'm going to kind of do a pre-fit on it, make sure we're, we're solid on everything. All right, cool. And then I'm going to put my little bit of glue on each side wall. These usually take about, about three to four minutes to assemble, so it works pretty good. It goes pretty quick especially if you have a lot of them already preset to be put together. Then you take them, you stand them up, you line them up. Now keep your fingers out of the way. Safety is always the number one priority, right? Uh, so you get them lined up and you throw your brad nail in. You get the bottom lined up. Just two, just like I said. If your wood is uh, bowed at all, you could certainly throw another one on there. It's not going to hurt nothing. Um, you'll find what system works best for you. It just takes time to get that system down. The first few are going to take you a little bit to get together um, until you get a rhythm down. Once you get that rhythm down, shoot, it's fine. Um, I usually listen to music when I'm doing this. It kind of drowns out the noise of the Brad gun. Um, and I go to town. I usually put together about about 30 to 40 of these in about an hour if I have all the materials pre-cut and set out. Usually I do, it makes it a lot easier. So remember I had that glue on the inside and I kind of snug that in there. And you can see how everything's lining up perfectly. And again, I'm just gonna throw brad nails in there. You wanna be careful of those large knots and stuff like that. Sometimes they have a habit of breaking your picket you know, pickets are pretty cheap right now. They're they're about three bucks each. All right, so there's that. Got your little pumpkin face. Now this is kind of a debatable thing right here, right? Um, either you can throw some glue around here to give that stability, or you could just toss it on the brad nails on. In this case, I'm going to throw some glue up there. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want it dribbling all all around. Biggest thing you need to be careful of is if you're trying to do these as quickly as you can and, and you decide not to use glue or you decide not to use a screw and you just use brad nails, you're going to take a chance of falling apart. And then people are just going to not want to um, buy stuff from you, you know, just because you're kind of putting your name out there. I like to double check on my fit and then I get it on there and kind of finesse it on basically how much I think it is. And that actually seems pretty well right there. And then I go ahead and on all four corners. I throw a brad nail in. And there we go. That's the jack o' lantern. Didn't really throw no brad nails through there, so that worked out really good. Again, I keep the bottoms open. And it works out really good. The only thing, I, other thing I'll say is um, for candles and stuff like that. Sorry, I think I'm being paged upstairs, but I'm not going to go yet. 
um, for candles, what I like to use is these flameless candles, right? They work pretty good. We'll show you what those look like. May not be able to look that uh, bright right now, but you'll get an idea on what they look like when I turn out the other light to the garage. Let me go get that light for a second. And that's what you got. These are flicker flameless candles. You can get them on Amazon. I get them in a box of 192. I will try to remember to put the link in the, uh, the description. But in my area, I sell these for $15 each. Or I sell them for three for 45, you know, uh, three for 40. I'm sorry, three for 40. They sell pretty quick. I think last year I probably sold about um, four or five truckloads um, double stacked in the back of my uh, four foot bed. Um, me and my son and my wife uh, at different times all sold them and I couldn't keep up with it. It was a nice little chance to make a little extra buck. Um, I think when I first started, I spent about $20 in pickets and I had everything else. And then I just kept rolling that back into getting more pickets. And before I knew it, I was getting about a hundred pickets at a time to turn around and make profit. Uh, last year's profit, uh, after all the expenses and everything like that, I think I was sitting at a little bit under about $4,000 uh, in profit outside of the buying of the materials, just because of how many lanterns I had to make. Um, you'll also notice that I have a secondary video it's uh, discussing my Christmas lights or my Christmas lights with string lights um, lanterns. Um, both of these are available on my Etsy shop. Um, just look me up, John Parker, or just type in jack-o'-lanterns or Christmas string lights. Um, I have pretty much all my files there. Um, you have to purchase them. But I'm telling you right now, if you decide to buy uh, the plans um, and you make one sale on jack-o'-lanterns, just one, you'll make up the difference. I think I have my plans on there right now for $6.99 for the jack-o'-lanterns and $8.99 for the Christmas lights, string lights. Selling one of these will, you'll definitely make up your money. Um, uh, my one infinity machine here that I use to cut everything out, um, it cost me about, about 2,600 bucks, give or take, to include the bits and everything like that. And within about four weeks of me doing the jack-o'-lanterns, the machine was paid for. Um, and I was able to get a few other uh, tools from my shop. So please reach out if you got any questions. Watch, subscribe, like, do whatever you like. I'm not after no algorithms. I'm just after trying to make you some money because at this day and time and age, you know, everybody could use that little extra money. And you as a woodworker or you as a craft or a DIY or, or laser engraver, you know, you want that extra income because it helps.